Welcome officially uh, to our second session of the Curricula Matters Learning and Advocacy Series. Um, so the goals of, of the, the Learning Arc series, all of the sessions that we're going to engage in together are here on the screen. Um, so the, the first one is to improve equitable access to standards aligned high quality curriculum and instruction for students of color, low income students and English learners. And second, to uplift the need for equity to be a driving force on the math framework and adopted materials list development processes. Throughout the series, we're referencing high quality instructional materials. And I think it's really important for us to know like how we as a coalition, as a collection of organizations are defining it. And so these four descriptors um, frame, frame what, what we mean, right? For lack of a better word, and um, it's worth noting that we think first, high quality instructional materials are state standards aligned. We also mean that they are user friendly, both for teachers and for students. They're accessible to the folks who need to know how to use the materials and to the students who are meant to access them. Um, high quality instructional materials should also be culturally relevant. We're going to learn a little bit more about that later in our series. And then last but not least, um, high quality instructional materials must support English learners access to grade level content and make sure that our students who are learning English aren't barred from access to rigorous content as they're learning language simultaneously. Hi everyone, I'm Shanna Estep from Ed Reports. Uh, really appreciate um, being asked to, to, to hang out with you all today. Um, not only do I represent Ed Reports today, but I'm also the only Ed Reports um, or Ed Reporter um, who is from California. I live in Fresno um, and have done some uh, a lot of work both at the county office level here in Fresno. Um, I was with the core districts before I came to Ed Reports. So um, this work that you're all doing and California in general and the framework and the math framework um is very very near and dear to my heart um this is our um our mission statement i definitely won't um read it to you but in 2015 we we launched our first reviews um of math materials it actually the the first reports came on the heels of the um the the list of mathematics and structural materials from the department california department of ed um and there were definitely some <clears throat> feelings about um, the list and what our organization was saying about many of the products that were um, on the list uh, listed as uh, aligned and adoptable, right, um, from LEA, for LEAs. But our, our mission then and today is really to provide the field with detailed evidence about materials alignment to the expectations that are set out in the standards, right? Um, we also believe that with great information, um, educators, teachers, um, admin, uh, parents um, can make much better decisions about the quality of the materials we're using. Um, I myself do not work on the review side of the house. Um, most of my work is actually in this space or directly supporting districts to um, uh, and states to adopt new materials. I'm happy to be on a partnership uh, with our pivot friends here today in Cal Curriculum, which we've been working at uh, for the last few years, providing resources to folks who are looking at adopting or implementing materials. So, next slide. I'm just going to revisit a little bit of what we talked about last time when we were together. Um, we shared a little bit of data around um, why materials are important. Um, I believe we also shared, this is TNTP's opportunity myth, um, which has been referenced by many national organizations, including NCTM and NCSM. Um, and basically, high quality instructional materials can be used as a lever toward providing students with these resources here, right? Consistent opportunities to engage with grade level assignments, strong instructions where students, or strong instruction where students do the thinking, um, especially in mathematics, we're looking to have um, students do the heavy lift in, in math, um, deep engagement in what they're learning and a teacher who believes that, that their students can actually meet the grade level content. Um, and, and then 
these materials provide opportunities for teachers to, to help do the good work of planning for that. Um, love this statement. We believe that high quality instructional materials are actually a lever for equitable um, access to a quality um, uh, instruction uh, education that all students um, deserve. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also believe that the adoption and consistent use of high quality instruction materials ensure that every student has access to quality grade level content and high expectations and that the use of um, high quality instructional materials actually decrease the inequities in instruction between and within schools. We know that um, there's a lot of data out there that shows us that um, the uh, really, really it comes down to the variances that are actually between and within schools, even from classroom to classroom, teacher in room, one room um, is using uh, high quality instruction materials, teacher in another room is, you know, kind of making things up as they go. Um, and that really is what causes that, uh, those inequities. Uh, we do know, however, that we aren't quite there yet. Um, when we launched in 2015, we saw that only one of the six products we looked at um, met expectations um, of the alignment to the standards. Now we're, we see that about a third of materials reviewed meet those expectations. We've looked at about 90% of the market. Um, I think the more troubling aspect of this data is that while there are about 25 K-8 products and close to 25, 22, I think, high school products that meet expectations, still 60% of teachers are using something else, right? Either they haven't been vetted or they are, um, they are not meeting expectations or not even close to meeting expectations, right? Which means the majority of students in California don't have access to high quality materials. Next slide. So, um, I, I shared my my work is primarily external facing right I have the privilege of working with educators at all levels of the system on a weekly basis and here's the number one question that I'm usually asked so what does high quality mean now you all have um, uh, set a definition of what high quality instructional materials mean we don't really define high quality materials but we do um, have some characteristics and criteria that are in place of the things that we that constitute high quality to us excuse me um, we see materials and and high quality materials specifically as having three distinct areas for evaluation um, and reports we look at two of these in depth um, and educators who are trying to make curriculum and instruction decisions look at the third um, overall, there are some foundational characteristics of materials that distinguish what we evaluate. Uh, and then once that is considered at reports, we review those materials against the subject matter markers, right? The standards that are set out in both um, and, and the instructional ships that are set out in the framework for California and the Com National Common Core Standards. And we also look at some usability uh, markers. So finally, that little last piece of the puzzle there, that little yellow piece, are those local needs that, um, that each district has so that uh, the materials they adopt meet, meet the needs of their stakeholders. So here are some of the foundational characteristics that we look for. Most notably, we only review comprehensive year-long materials that are meant for core instruction in the content. So we do not review supplements. We do not review piecemeal modules. Um, and uh, our focus is really those materials that are put in place um, as core materials, which you would find on the California list when they publish their list. Again, I won't read through all these bullets, but um, suffice it to say that uh, we're looking for materials that have a coherent set of um, activities and lessons so that um, students are progressing towards the goals of the standards. Next slide, please. Uh, when our review teams launch, um, the focus of their evaluation is looking at the, the lens of the publisher's criteria. So um, I think Rachel was talking a little bit about the criteria that's in the framework. There is a national set of publisher criteria also. Uh, that was put forth by the Council of Great City Schools. And um, they call out these shifts in instruction for mathematics. Um, 
listed here, focus, coherence, and rigor in the standards. I'll go into more detail in a moment, but those are the markers that we're looking for when our reviewers are, are headed in thinking about the alignment to the standards for the mathematical standards. Um, we also know that uh, materials and high quality materials um, are, include things that are above and beyond just standards alignment and uh, you know some usability factors. Um, while we look at factors other than standards, um, we, we do look at technology and assessment and um, educator support, differentiation in general. We strongly believe that materials should be first and foremost aligned to the standards and expectations of the grade level, which is you know, very, very similar when I look at um, uh, the criteria for in the California framework um, that's set in that number one. So while we agree that um, uh, materials must be aligned to the standards and instructional shifts, um, we also uh, agree that uh, there, there should be some additional elements that support teachers to do the, the, the work of uh, teaching a variety of students every day. I know we're going to hear from our partners at um, ELSF later in the series, but I really appreciate this particular quote um, from their work. Much of the research about supporting students and particularly multilingual learners uh, tell us that high quality materials that are aligned with grade level expectations are the minimum, right? Then students need those materials and instruction to provide opportunities for scaffolding and engagement. So we have to figure out a way, and I, I saw someone else mentioned this in the, in the chat too, is to really call out how um, specifically for English learners, they're developing the content along with the, the, um, the language acquisition. So I'm gonna take just a minute um, and kind of go a little bit weedy just to let you know what it is exactly that we're looking for. So off, oftentimes when um, I'm in the room with um, uh, other math experts, they want to know exactly what it is we're looking for and, and how we do that. And because we value the standards and know how important grade level content is for every student, we've actually designed the tool and reviews to look at materials through a gateway system. So uh, materials move through the gateways according to whether or not they meet the expectations of the, the said gateway. Um, and then with gateway three, looking at the instructional supports and usability indicators. Each gateway has a set of criteria and indicators that are math specific um, that guide the reviewers process and their discussion and their, um, their collaboration and their calibration. Next slide. Um, in mathematics, in gateway one, um, I'll take you briefly through what, what exactly what reviewers are looking for. In gateway one, we are they're focused on focus and co they're focused on focus and coherence. Um, these are two of the instructional shifts that I mentioned earlier that were set out by the organizations that wrote the new standards. Um, focus means that students are working with grade level content only and for a certain amount of time, you know, the bulk of the time, instructional time is working within um, what we call um, uh, that uh, major work of the grade. That's, there's um, Student Achievement Partners has an incredible document uh, for K-8 specifically that just um, outlines what is the major work uh, for each of the grade levels in mathematics. Um, coherence, for us means that lessons and activities are directly related to the standards and are connected to previous grade level content and previously learned materials. This is where the progression documents come in um, as we're looking at coherence. And if the uh, materials meet or partially meet the expectations in alignment there, they are then moved on um, and reviewed uh, for gateway two. And gateway two is where we look for um, uh, uh, rigor and math practice. So the what we mean by rigor is not what we typically hear as far as, you know, um, complex or complicated. There's actually a very specific definition for rigor in mathematics, and it is the balance of uh, procedural knowledge, conceptual knowledge, and application. So procedural um, skill, meaning we can, um, the students can plot um, 
uh, points on a graph or a line. Um, conceptual understanding, meaning they can tell you the why, you know, why the certain um, procedure works or um, uh, why a fraction, what number a fraction might represent. Um, and then the application piece is those, you know, putting those skills together and solving problems. Right. The second criterion we look at are the uh, is the alignment of the content and the um, standards for mathematical practice, which I think Rachel referred to earlier under the SMPs. Um, so if materials, if the materials meet for, for gateway one and they meet for gateway two, that means they are aligned to the standards, all parts and pieces of the standards, all of those expectations for students, then they move to gateway three, um, which is the usability. So we call it usability. Um, I know that in the, uh, the definition, you all have, um, a user friendliness, um, sometimes uh, materials aren't as uh, user friendly as we'd like them to be. So we just kind of give you information about the usability piece. Um, here, we are looking for characteristics of materials that really allow teachers to do their day to day job, right? Um, one of the things that we look for here is how do the materials provide opportunities to engage and support students, specifically multilingual learners. And um, we, we have some indicators around teacher supports around those directions and, and assessment also similar to the assessments that are called out in chapter 11 in the framework. <clears throat> and then, um, you know, just in response to uh, to the pandemic and students in a remote learning situation, we have uh, uh, lifted up some of the technology aspects of the materials. But I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we look at with regards to student supports. Uh, next slide, please. So here is just a quick screen grab of the rating sheet for this particular criterion. You can see that reviewers are looking for grouping strategies, uh, guidance for home language use, diverse demographics and representation, and just overall accessibility. <clears throat> you can also see that some of these indicators are scored and some of them aren't scored. They just provide narrative evidence. Um, I really believe, you know, working with districts and states specifically to use really these particular rating sheets that the non scored narrative evidence is just as valuable, if not more valuable um, when when folks are making decisions about um, adoption and or implementation. So we have uh, Some of these indicators are brand new. We've we re revised our tool. We're at the one point version 1.5. I wouldn't call it a, a whole um, shift. A 2.0, but we are definitely at the 1.5 and have included some of these um, additional non scored indicators. All right, next slide please. So I think what what thinking about what Manuel has said and shared and Rachel have, sh have shared um, and you know i'm very optimistic uh, about the new their new framework. But uh, we we know how important it is for educators to look at high quality materials, both from the standards point of view, but also <clears throat> how those materials and instruction build students agency and identity and beliefs uh, about their own mathematical learning. And um, because we believe that at um, that that's just as important at ed reports, it's been um, really the crux of our relationship with pivot learning in the Cal curriculum space. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to say that that work has uh, continually grown and we have provided uh, lots of support to districts uh, across California um, who are looking to adopt new materials or implement their current materials. Uh, next slide. And with that, uh, what we did was we created a, a new resource that's on the calcurriculum.com in response to, you know, the work we've done in California, Cal, Cal curriculum developed a tool that really is, you know, targeted at California educators to look at the ed reports tool and how those indicators um, line up uh, to the uh, the values in the ELD framework. So in this resource, you'll see that the, the values from the ELD framework 
introduction and then how the math tool aligns with the values and you can see the exact indicators to look for in the tool see how uh, materials are measuring up to what we hold as critical for multilingual learners and all students really this is just starting to kind of get at the how are we including the eld framework in also uh, communicating about the importance of alignment um, to the standards when districts are thinking about um, new materials I, I really appreciated what Manuel said about, you know, LEA guidance. One of the things that we're doing with Cal Curriculum is really trying to figure out how do we, along with this organization, how do we help people understand and know um, when they're going to select new materials, where should they look? Because the list, you know, might include 20 to 30 uh, um, titles or products. No district can possibly look at 20 to 30 to evaluate whether or not they're aligned to the standards. They shouldn't have to do that. That's kind of where Ed Reports comes in. And how else can we communicate um, and advocate for um, some, some language around um, what LEA should do and look at um, uh, regarding vetted materials when they're adopting new materials? 